In this video, I have some bad news. I'm going to sell my Steinberg UR12. Yes, my favorite audio interface is on its way out. And why? Well, there's nothing sad about this. I still love this interface, but here's the reason why. I've just picked up da, 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 the Steinberg UR22C. Yes, the brand new USB 3.0 interface from Steinberg. And in this video, I'm going to open this up. We're going to take a look inside. We're going to see what features this has. And then I might even have time to plug it into my iPhone and have a quick play. So let's dive in and take a look at this now. Now, why did I buy this? Well, I love the Steinberg UR12, as you saw over there. I'll put it out of the shot there. I love the Steinberg UR12, but it's only uh, one mic and one line in. And I wanted something that's stereo. Now, I nearly bought the UR22 Mark II, uh, as I know a lot of folks have and use and love, until this came out. And I thought, well, not only should I get the latest and greatest because, hey, folks here might want to see this here on the channel, but, hey, I'm going to future-proof myself because I had the, the old Steinberg for probably nearly five years now, and I'm going to grab uh, the new one. And this will hopefully last me the next five years of audio recording here now that is USB 3.0. So let's open it up and take a quick look see inside uh there we go we will jump up here so we got a big thick manual that's the first thing that we get in there with the picture of it now I, by the way i love steinberg's unstated just class that they have here so unlike a lot of under, other interfaces that have a bunch of stuff plastered all over like best thing here all these great features this just says we got all this stuff this is just quality. You know you want this. <laughs> I kind of like that. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so we got the manual. We got you get Cubase AI download information, which we'll play around with product license and Cubasis LE for iPad. So maybe I should finally actually download Cubasis and take a look at that. Apologies, the camera's going in and out because I keep moving things around. Once we get a little bit more stable, uh, we'll be okay. I should have set my focus to still. So inside the box, we also get, this now I, I bought myself one of these as well I've, it's over there somewhere but luckily it uh, it came with one of these so there's a usb uh, usb c to a cable so we can plug it into our regular usb stuff here so that is good we'll put that to the side and that's about all she spoke because the only other thing in this rather sparse box as you can see there is our interface itself so we'll throw the box down there and we'll open this up we'll take it out let's see if it's got Yes, it's got new interface smell. Don't you love that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a weird dude. All right, let's open this up. Oh, it's sticking in there. Oh, shiny. I say shiny, but it's not. It's like a matte, as you can see there. There it is. So there is our front interface panel. We'll bring that up for a nice closer look. It's all very black. So uh, everything in the front here is not showing up beautifully on the camera because it's very black as opposed to the old Steinberg that had kind of the silvery. There's the difference between the two. Oh, well, it was kind of black too, wasn't it? Just had the silver silver frame around the outside. But yes, yeah, so we've got two combo jacks here. So these are quarter inch and XLR. I'll just find, there we go. So quarter inch XLR combo jacks there. They have their own independent gain controls there. We can dial in the gain on those ones. We then have up here, we have our mix knob. So unlike uh, unlike the other one, so well, I'll bring it back into shop. So unlike something like this that just has the direct monitor button, so you're either monitoring direct or you're monitoring through your software. So it's going straight through the hardware with no software monitoring, or it's going 100% through your software. What this has, and one of the reasons I like this, is you can actually mix it in. You can mix the amount you want. And the UR22 has the same thing. The older version has that same one as well. And then... We have the headphone, headphone jack, standard headphone jack there with its own separate knob. And finally, it's still not that big, but finally Steinberg have actually increased the size of our volume control there, right? So it's not that it's not the same tiny little dial that we have. You can see there, it's not the same tiny dial we have on the other ones. It's actually a little bit larger, which is a bit better. There's the top of the interface looking nice there. Sorry, my lighting on this with a really black interface, I should have upped the brightness on my camera so that we could take a look at this. In fact, I wonder if I can do that live here. Let's just see if we can add a little brightness to the camera. There we go. There you can see a little bit better. So. Yeah, there's the front panel. We've got all of the great stuff there. Flip it around because this is where the Steinberg interfaces kind of come into their own here. So what do we have? I'll bump the microphone there. On this side, we've got balanced jacks. So output quarter inch TRS balanced outputs left and right. So that means you can plug these into your monitor speakers and you're going to get a high quality signal. No RCA here like we had on the old UR12. 
like the UR22 Mark II, we've got balanced TRS outputs, which are good. We then have MIDI. Yes, MIDI in and out is a feature on this one here. We've got our, I've got to look over here, we've got our 48 volts of phantom power that we can turn on and off. And then, like all of our Steinberg interfaces, and people say, Pete, why do you like Steinberg? Why don't you use uh, Focusrite or Behringer or any of the other interfaces you could use? And it's this reason is the number one reason, is that we've got a switchable power supply, which means we can switch it either the USB 3 that we've got there, the USB 3 port, or we can flick it over to 5 volts of DC from this micro USB port. So I'll give you a closer look at that there and make my camera do extra work. So yes, you've got the two different options there that you can plug into. Build quality, yeah, you know it's Steinberg. You know the build quality is good. Built like a tank, nice and heavy. You know there's some quality components in there. And yeah, it just looks stylish and understated and very cool. So yes, uh, we've got uh, some folks that are here live. Hello to the folks that are here live. And uh, yeah, Mr. Rads here says, OMG, MIDI out. That's very cool. Yeah, so MIDI in and MIDI out. The problem is that MIDI out's not supported in GarageBand, which is what I use most of the time. So it's not as exciting as it may seem. But it means that we can plug MIDI in into this interface as well and get everything done through the one interface, which is kind of cool. All right, let's grab out this cable. We'll open it up and have a look. I think the dog has snuck in behind me there. Uh, so we'll uh, get out our USB 3 to USB A cable, which again, I, I bought one because I wasn't sure what it came with. I thought if it only comes with like a USB 3 or USB C to C, like the small one, then I won't be able to actually plug it in. But it doesn't even come with that. So if you did have like a an iPad Pro, as uh, I know Jade Star and other folks that are, that are here live do have, then you, yeah, I'm wondering if you could just plug it directly in via that straight in but you probably wouldn't get enough power. That's the thing we're going to be taking a look at here in a moment. So here it is. We're going to plug in the power. So this one, we can go into the USB 3 like that. Make sure that that is the power source that is selected, USB 3. If we wanted to power it separately, we, all we need to do is plug that into a wall socket or into a portable battery. Yes, that's why I love these. You can use them with a portable charger, portable, portable battery pack, and you'll be good to go as well. But we're going to use it right here and right now with this now i had a question so i'm going to i'm going to try and plug it in via the lightning to usb3 adapter here so this is the uh, genuine apple version if you want to check out any of the gear that i recommend i don't have this on my affiliate links yet because it is so new it is not really sold anywhere yet so it's not on amazon.com that i could find but i will find it and i will uh pop it down in the description so uh where was what i needed i need my iphone which is in my pocket <laughs> <laughs> which you can see. So I'm going to, first of all, power this up. So I'm going to give this some juice by bringing in a powered lightning cable. So this is plugged into AC power. So we're going to work around this and see if this is going to give it enough juice to actually power this up without having to use our powered hub. Otherwise, we'll bring our hub into the game. So we're going to plug that in there. Got a little buzz, which just means it's powered up our phone. But nothing's happening here in terms of powering up the interface. We'll just jump into GarageBand on the phone just to say, just to make sure and create song to go in here, go to our audio recorder and take a squiz. Yeah, no, it's going through the mic. So nothing's happening there. It's definitely not getting enough juice. So I had a question here just before we started saying, will it work? Just plugging it straight in. Are you going to get enough power from this? At least on the iPhone, could try the iPad, but at least on the iPhone, it's not. So my recommendations are to either plug this in via a powered USB hub, which is what we're about to do here now, or get a, an external battery. And if you go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear, I've got a heap of external batteries that I recommend there. But let's unplug this for now because what we're going to need to do is bring in our friend, the Tendac powered USB hub, which is over here. Here is its USB cable. So instead of plugging direct, what we need to do is we'll take away the power so we don't create some sort of weird power loop. We will plug this end in here, and then this is going to go into our iPhone like so. So now we're good to go. We've got the powered USB hub plugged into this, but this is plugged into nothing. So what we actually need to do is plug this into one of these ports. So we'll turn the port off first. We'll then grab the power cable here. We'll put it into this port here. We'll hit the power button and nothing happened. What have I done wrong? What am I doing wrong here, folks? Uh, we will check the power source here. You know what? 
<sighs> I didn't have the power source on the right one. I probably didn't have it on the right one before. This is the beauty of live video. I think I say this on every live video, but uh, the beauty of live video is you'll either see something really cool or you'll see a train wreck and we're a little bit of the latter right now. Anyway, this could be promising because maybe it will work with that one, but let's just try this one for now. We'll power that up. Boom. Oh, I like that. Look at that light going around there. We've got a little, uh, little connection light coming on here going to flash it's going to go solid and that means we're connected and you know we're connected because GarageBand has said we're connected we're going to turn on monitoring and now we can select here between input you can't see that it says input one input two stereo but it's not going to gain focus there so yes it has connected it has worked that is a good thing all right <laughs> let's uh let's unplug so we'll turn that off turn it off on the 10 deck let's this time actually make sure that we have the right power selection and let's try this again. So we'll unplug, we'll unplug. That's all right. You, you came here to see me just mess this up completely, didn't you? Yeah, it's just as fun, I promise. So we will plug now, plug the power into here and see if we get enough juice to run. Oh, it flashed. I saw it flash. Did you see it flash? Alas, that's all she wrote. Um, yeah, we got, a, we got a wee flash there, but then we got nothing else. So I'll just unplug and replug. But I'm going to say that we're going to be, at least with the iPhone, we're going to be out of luck. And because Pete's really unprepared, he didn't bring his iPad. Plug it in. Flat. Oh, it's on this time. Uh, uh, uh. Bingo. Is it coming? Oh, hello. Hello, Steinberg. Yes, we have, we have liftoff. Without the hub. Let's push the hub out the way. Let's see. This could be this could be pretty epic, actually. If we could just charge it all up and power everything just from this, then you can plug this into a battery or into power, and we might be good to go. But that's looking okay. I do love the ring around the a ring around the light there. That's kind of cool. I wonder if that if that actually like flashes like the um the focus rights do if you clip. That'd be kind of. I don't think so because we actually have peak lights up here on this one. So if you peak, if you have a clipping signal, it will pop the peak up there. All right, that is all pretty cool, uh, but it wouldn't be a test if we didn't plug in and actually play with it, right? So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the volume down on this channel. Now, to make it easier, I've just grabbed my 3.5mm cable here, which I'm going to plug into the headphone socket of this one, if I can find it. Oh, you can hear it coming in there, like that. And make sure the volume on the headphones is all the way down. Then what I'll do, let's just open up a project, one of these that I've been working on, this demo from my, this delay demo that I've been working on. We'll hit play on that one. Make sure it's playing back, which it is. It's playing a track there. I uh, don't know why I'm caring about what I'm playing here, but you know, I, I do. Um, let's just, all right. So if we turn this volume up on my mixer now, so the mixer volume is up, the headphone volume. There we go. We're getting some volume through. Sweet. That is so cool. Basil's impressed. Are you impressed? I know I am. All right. So what we need to do now is let's uh, grab our microphone. Let's just plug in and make sure that, and I don't know why they wouldn't work, but, <laughs> but you know, I've got to test things fully. Let's make sure everything's cool. So let's make sure that we can plug this mic in to our XLR jack. I'm not going to do a guitar. I'm not going to do a full test, but don't stress. I will be back to test this out fully. I'm going to record an entire song using it in the next few weeks. So you'll be able to hang around. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe and you'll be able to check that out. So we've plugged that one in there. We don't need the 48 volts of power, which is somewhere, somewhere else. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still learning this one. Uh, okay, so that's the high Z input. We'll turn that off. We've got a uh, mono. Oh, there's a mono button there. We can send our audio out in mono. That's pretty cool. Okay, that's something to explore later. Um, yes, yeah, so it looks like we have a mono function as well. I'm finding out more cool things about this as we go along. So we'll dial in our input gain here on this microphone. So that's over here on the on the left hand side, on the right hand side of the screen. Oh, I've bumped something. You heard it go click. That that's never a good sound. All right, let's uh. Let's now I need to queue up a track here. Queue up a track here in GarageBand, like so. Boom. And we're going to turn monitoring on. Check one, two, three. That's coming through. So if we dial up, dial up the input gate. Oh, there we go. All right, let's uh let's turn down 
I've turned down my AK, what is it? My Audio Technica AT2020, and I'm talking just through, hello, I'm talking just through this microphone here now. So if we hit record, let's sing some funk. Oh, it stopped. Let's, oh, it stopped again. It's, it was the end of the song. Let's try again. Let's go back to the start of the song. That might actually be better. Two, three, four. Let's sing some funk on the Steinberg You are 22 C. Oh, yeah. I should turn that back up. That sounded good. That looked like it worked. That sounded like it was coming through pretty clearly. Now, this is not going to be like a sound quality test. Obviously, this is a pretty janky kind of setup here. But in terms of just showing you how this works and how easy it is, even easier than I thought to plug in, that's pretty cool. Let's just solo this vocal track and play it back. Let's sing some funk on the Steinberg You are 22 C. Oh, yeah. Now, you can't probably hear that great through all the YouTube compression and everything, but that's a really clear signal. Like, I just, I didn't even play with the input gain. I didn't spend a lot of time with that, but I turned, just plugged it in, turned it up, hit the channel, recorded clean audio, and the background noise, even in this environment with all the weird setup I've got going on here and all my computer fans, was virtually none. This is what I love about this. These d these preamps, they, they have absolutely no right being on like a $200 interface like this, like $240 Australian. It's probably going to, when it finally actually gets properly released in the US, it'll probably be less than 200 and probably around the 150 mark, if I'm not mistaken. So hopefully this is out uh, everywhere before Christmas so that everyone can get on this because, yeah, I, I'm, I'm super impressed. That, uh, not that it doesn't take a lot to impress me, but I, I already liked Steinberg. I already liked my UR12. This just seems to have a whole bunch of different functions that I love even more. So, and the fact that we can just use it plugged in through here, that's pretty cool as well. So we've got this into AC power, which you can't see out of the shot there. We've got it into our lightning to USB 3 adapter, and then into our iPhone here. We recorded some vocals. We can play back. It's all sounding and looking good. So let's unplug. Oof. You know what you should always do? Turn your volume down before you unplug things, Pete. You should know this by now. You're a professional YouTube reviewer as he's sitting here in his shorts uh, reviewing this interface. All right, we'll, uh, we'll undo that one. We'll take that one out there. Um, yeah, that that is uh, that is pretty cool. So let's just run through the features again here. If you've just joined us or if you want a quick summary, we've got two combo jack inputs here, which accept TRS or quarter, sorry, accept XLR or quarter inch TRS. So you can put a stereo line input there from a keyboard or a synthesizer, two microphones, two guitars, whatever you like. Dial those in independently. It seems that we have a mono button here, which I need to explore more. The ability to just uh, mono your signal at the touch of a button on your hardware is pretty darn cool. Uh, we can change that second input to a high Z or high Z, which means that we can use our guitars with that, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got our mix dial here to mix in, and there's a, there's a you can, oh, it's got a little middle section there that actually clicks in. So that's going to be cool for deciding whether we want direct monitoring or whether we want uh, the monitoring through the software. The reason for that, by the way, is for latency. So if you want the, the best latency uh, or the lowest latency, you want to use direct monitoring, which I think is that way, uh, input, yeah, or you can turn it around and get all your monitoring, which means all your effects and things out of your, your iPhone, iPad, Mac, PC are going to come through there. We've then got a headphone jack and our headphone, our headphone volume there, and then our cool light around our actual larger, <laughs> still not huge, but actual larger volume control there. So that is all pretty cool. And as I said before, we're going to shove that stuff out of the way. As I said before, why I like Steinberg is what we have on the back here. So yes, balanced outputs here, TRS outputs to uh, a balanced uh, stereo monitors are going to be cool. MIDI in and out on here if your software supports or your hardware supports and two ways to power it. You can power it directly like we did here through a lightning to USB 3 adapter, through a powered USB hub, or if you're on the go and you don't have the power, you can just plug a battery in flick it over to that other switch that I did the wrong way around the first time and you will be good to go. So there you have it. The Steinberg UR22C. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel because I will definitely be doing some follow-up videos. I just wanted to take a quick first look at this one and show you all of the cool things that we have here. Thanks for watching. There's two more videos linked down below. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon and I'll see you next time.